Welcome back to the channel. Today we will be covering an example of a design of beam splices for fixing to existing steelwork. Generally, with a typical beam splice, it is assumed that the flange plates, on the top and bottom of the beam, take all the bending forces, and that the web plates support the shear. Therefore, the bending moment at the splice is resisted by pure tensile, and compressive forces in the flange plates acting at a lever arm of D. There must be sufficient bolts to transmit the flange plate loads to the beam flange. This, of course, puts a shear load on the bolts. Similarly, there must be sufficient bolts in the web plate to transmit the shear force. Here we have, a simply supported beam that spans 15 meters, and is to be fixed inside an existing building. Because of access problems, the beam must be split into three pieces of equal length. It is subject to the following loads. Dead load equals 26.2 kN per meter. Imposed load equals 18 kN per meter. We need to determine the size of a suitable standard universal beam in S275 steel. So, the design load equals 1.35 times 26.2, plus 1.5 times 18 which equals 62.4 kN per meter. Firstly, to work out the reactions, design load times half of the span which equals 62.4 times, 15 over 2 equals 468 kN. Secondly, working out the maximum bending moment, design load times the span squared, over 8, which equals 62.4 times 15 squared, over 8 equals 1755 kN now, we need to calculate the required plastic modulus, which equals the maximum bending moment divided by the yield stress. For S275 steel we can use a yield stress of 275 newton per millimeter squared, which equals 1755. To make this easier, we need to convert this from kilonewton meter to newton millimeter. How we do this, would be 1755 times 10 to 6, divided by the yield stress 275, the result is going to be in millimeter cubed. The steel section table for plastic modulus is measured in centimeter cubed. So, we need to convert the result by 1000 which equals 6382 centimeters cubed. Let's compare our result with the steel section properties table. We can clearly see that we need the amount 6810 centimeters cubed for our calculations. Therefore the steel section required would be 838 times 292 times 176 kg per meter universal beam. Furthermore, we need to identify the depth of the section, which is 835 mm, and web thickness which is 14 mm, lastly the flange thickness which 18.8 mm. Now we have all the figures, let's design a suitable beam splice. We need to work out the forces from the free body diagram for one side of the splice. Firstly, determine the shear force at the splice, V which equals 468 minus 62.4 time 5, which equals 156 kilonewton. Then, work out the bending moment at the splice, equals the reaction 468 kilonewton times the distance from the splice which is 5 meters minus the design load 62.4 kN per meter, times the distance between the support and the next splice, which is 5 meters, times half the distance which is 2.5 meters, equals 1560 kN meter. If we look, the lever arm, D, is the distance between the centers of the flange plates. If we initially estimate a plate thickness for the flange plates of 20 mm, and refer to section tables for the depth of the beam we get, D equals 835 plus 20, equals 855 mm. Therefore, the flange force equals the bending moment at the splice which is 1560 kN m, however let's convert this to Newton mm by multiplying 10 to 6, then divided by D, 855 mm, equals 1.825 times 10 to 6 newton. Now let's work out the flange area, which equals the flange force 1.825 times 10 to 6, divided by the yield stress 275, equals 6,636 mm squared. Make the flange plate the same width as the beam, for instance, 292 mm. 
It is proposed to use 24 mm diameter preloaded bolts, with a design single shear load capacity is 99 kN. We need to ensure, there is enough room for a double row on each side of the flange. The effective width of the flange plate must be found, by deducting the effect of 4 of bolt size 24 mm, plus 2, which equals 26 mm diameter holes. So, the effective flange width equals flange plate width 292 mm, minus number of bolts 4, times diameter holes 26 mm, equals 188 mm. Therefore, plate thickness equals flange area 6636, divided by effective flange width 188 mm, equals 35 mm. In addition, the number of flange bolts would be flange force 1825 kN, divided by the bolt load capacity 99 kN, equals 18.4, round this up to 20 per side. For the web plate use 14 mm thick plate, for example the same as the beam web. Next, the number of web bolts equals the shear at the splice 156 kN, divided by the bolt load capacity 99 kN, equals 1.6, round this up to 4 per side. There is a small additional shear force on the web bolts due to the moment caused by the horizontal spacing between the bolts. However, the use of the four bolts is safe. Lastly and equally important, we need to consider the end plate connection. Because the beam is simply supported, the bending moment is zero, and the end plate connection must transmit only the shear force. This is of course, equal to the reaction force 468 kN. Using 20 mm diameter bolts, with design load capacity in single shear, equal to 60.3 kN. Therefore, the number of bolts required, is maximum shear at the end plate, which is 468 kN, divided by the bolt load capacity 60.3 kN, equals 7.8, round this up to 8. Consider using an end plate, which is of similar thickness to the beam web, for instance 14 mm. Now, if the plate is 560 mm long, the load per millimeter on weld, equals the maximum shear at the end plate 468 kN, divided by the length plate 560 mm, times 2, because we are taking into account two sides of the web, which equals 0.42 kN per millimeter. As a 4 mm fillet weld has a strength of 0.62 kN per millimeter, and would be suitable. Thanks for watching. We hope you found some useful tips. Check out our website at structuralengineercalcs.com. Please like and subscribe and let us know what would you like to see next. The human footprint is a masterpiece of engineering and a work of art. Stay safe. Goodbye, and see you soon.